Welcome back to Artec. Today we're going to review the trusty Cooler Master H500 case and explore the ideal CPU radiator placement option. This isn't a new case by any means and we have three versions of the H500 already in the market. This is the base model and is one of the cheapest ones available. But it's of good value and does most of the things which the H500P or the H500M can also do. The build quality is fantastic. This is a steel, glass and plastic combo case. Uh, supports most motherboard sizes, ATX, MATX as well as EATX. Has 7 expansion slots, 2 3.5 inch and 2 2.5 inch uh, hard disk base. Comes with two huge 200mm RGB fans in the front and one non-RGB fan at the rear as an exhaust. It supports uh, radiator sizes for up to 280mm for the top. For the front, it will support a radiator size of up to 360mm, which means three 120mm fans can go in the front. This is one of the most well-known cases made by Cooler Master. It's Still not perfect, but it's one of the most practical ones available, and we'll see why. So this top portion has a magnetic dust filter. In the front of the case, you can see these two huge RGB 200mm fans. Comes with uh, an acrylic cover in the front. Uh, but it will restrict airflow. There is a power button which is not touch sensitive and it has only a single color LED. Uh, this is different from the other cases because I think they have the LED power button as well which changes color along with your other devices. There are two USB ports which are USB 3.0 and there are two USB ports which are USB 2.0. There is a recessed reset button there's a hard disk light as well. At the back, you have uh, thumb screws which can be easily removed and the back plates come off easily. You have seven expansion slots at the back and you also have this tiny 120mm rear fan that really looks small in this case. There's a power shroud inside the cabinet and that can be removed with a single thumb screw at the back and if you see here you know when you buy the case all the accessories for this case comes uh, installed inside your power shroud so there's a dust filter for the power supply as well doesn't come off easily but the build quality is really good You will notice the side has a tempered glass and this is flushed beautifully with the case. So to take this off, it just has two uh, non-thumb screws again. You'll have to just use a little bit of pressure and they can come off with your fingers. It's toughened glass, won't fall off. I remember looking at the NX500 from Mantec. When you remove the screws, the glass just falls on the table and it can actually crack. So this one won't fall off, it actually rests, it has a nice provision made by Cooler Master. So when you remove the screws, the glass actually rests on the cabinet. The plastic shroud doesn't cover the entire case, so the hard disk drives will be visible. Also notice that these front fan uh, cutouts from inside are not exactly circular and they do not expose the full fan. You only see about 70 to 75% of the front fans. So it's not exactly bringing in a lot of air from the front. So that's a little saddening to see. Uh, let's take off the shroud anyway and you'll see that all of your accessories that you need to build your PC are inside this.
There's a cleaning cloth, there's an RGB controller for the LEDs. You have some extension cables and tons of screws. There are provisions for two SSDs at the back plate. Okay, let's talk about the specs that I have for my build here. So this is an Astrox Steel Legend uh, M80X board. Uh, yeah, it's a smaller board for this big cabinet case, of course, and uh, it fits easily. I'm using an AMD Ryzen 3500 6 core processor with a 32 gigs of uh, Corsair Vengeance RAM. Very basic build. And uh, it's also got the GTX 1070 Ti. Now that's one of the main reasons uh, why I'm trying to do this experiment. I'm trying to see what's the ideal placement for the radiator inside this cabinet. Many of them say, you know, mount it on top. Uh, some of them say use the front because uh, it's probably going to be running cooler for the CPU. But, uh, you know, I wanted to check it out for myself. So I, I got some tips from Gamer Nexus. Uh, uh, and you know they kind of recommended using the radiator as exhaust and it kind of worked well so I want to try this myself uh, anyways let's come back to the case you do get an RGB controller with this I, I'm not using it because my motherboard has an RGB controller for the CPU cooler I'm using a cooler master ML 240L which is an RGB based liquid cooler for the CPU. I don't recommend this cooler because it is too noisy. There's always a hum or a whine uh, whenever there's a load on the CPU. So please do not buy this. So once you actually connect everything, you will notice that uh, the Astrock Polychrome software has tons of color setup options. And you know, it, it has so many colors and so many things you can do with it. You can play around with the lights. You can even turn it off if you don't want to. Anyway, getting back to the case. Despite these huge fans, the cabinet has mediocre airflow. These fans don't have static pressure and they're only meant to, you know, kind of drive in a little bit of air inside the cabinet. And most of the cabinet uh, looks like, you know, it's actually congested from the inside. The fan cutouts are not really big. Um, so, you know, I just thought, let me try mounting the radiator in front and see if there's a difference in the airflow. So I did run Call of Duty Warzone. So the radiator is actually mounted in front now. And on average, uh, when the game was probably idling, it gave me temperatures of about 45 degrees uh, for both the CPU and uh, GPU. My main concern was always about the processor heating up a lot. Uh, but I saw temperatures reaching close to 60 degrees and I thought it was a little too high. Uh, this was on the top mount. So that's when I kind of moved it to the front. And I thought, you know, those huge front fans will blow in some more air. And you'll have this push and pull setup, and the uh, you know temperatures for the CPU will go down considerably. So anyway, let's see what actually happened. So I kind of made this setup where. Um, the radiator was mounted in the front. I ran Call of Duty Warzone. And after running the game for about 10 minutes, you would see that my GPU temperatures were averaging about 78 degrees, 78 to 80 degrees sometimes. And the processor was running around about 57 to 58 degrees. This was okay from a perspective for the you know CPU running a little bit cooler than before. But the GPU, that was really, really heating up. And I could feel the hot air on you know, the surface of the cabinet. So this never happened before, but the front mounting configuration started heating up the case quite badly. 
and the temperature for the GPU was going up almost by 5 to 6 degrees. So I realized it's probably because I only have one exhaust in the case. Anyway, time to change the config. I'm going to remove all this and then put this radiator on top. So getting off this radiator, you'll have to actually remove the front covering, the dust filter for the front two big fans. And behind these fans, you'll have the radiator screws. I was lucky enough to take, you know, just one fan out because I could reach the screws through the fan. Mounting the radiator on top of the case is super simple. Just eight screws will hold the radiator firmly and, you know, the whole setup gets covered by these magnetic dust covers. Just remember to change the orientation of the fans because right now it is actually pushing air inside the cabinet. Now I need to push air outside the cabinet through the radiator. So once everything is done, I'm going to start the game again. And after a couple of minutes, I noticed that the you know, uh, GPU is running relatively cooler about 68 degrees and CPU is hovering around the 57 to 50, 55 to 57 mark. As I go on for about 10 minutes, I noticed that the CPU temperature started going up to 60 to 61. It wouldn't go up more than that a lot. Um, maybe it has 63, but just once, but otherwise it's always within 60 to 61. But the best part is the GPU hovers only around the 72 to 73 degree mark. So that is awesome. So I, I realized that, you know, mounting the radiator in front will keep your CPU cooler, but the GPU will run hotter as there's not a lot of fans to kind of exhaust that hot air from the, G, from the GPU. And this could result in lower performance due to throttling problems. Whereas mounting your radiator on top keeps the uh, CPU temperature slightly higher by about 3 degrees. So it's 61 degrees, but it's still not a lot to kind of affect your performance on the CPU. And your GPU will remain, remain relatively cooler at 72 to 73 degrees. That's nearly 5 to 6 degrees cooler. So they, these results might be build specific, but you will see, you know, um, that the H500 case is actually a good looking case, well designed, spacious, airflow isn't the strong point of this cabinet or the case. You know, practicality, looks are probably the highlights, it's not the airflow. So it it is a great all rounder case anyways, I mean you can mount a motherboard easily into it. And uh, you could let me know, I mean, have you guys tried uh, this option where you mounted the radiator in the front uh, versus the top? Did you guys see any difference? Please leave your comments below and let's hear them. I'll leave the links in the description for all the products which I covered here. And uh, once again, thank you so much for watching Artec. I hope you guys are all safe from the coronavirus pandemic. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.